One of the most powerful force multipliers any of us have is the grill of our car. Welcome to today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video has multiple different incidents, one of which I'm not positive where it comes from, the other of which I know is out of Argentina. The new Mantis X10 firearms performance system has all the goodness of the original, plus holster draw analysis and recoil analysis. It's a fantastic upgrade and I recommend it highly. We see this guy backing his car into his house. He's got a, a gate on the, the property. Okay, fine, you can see these other dudes come out and they're gonna pile out. And as soon as he sees them coming, he puts it in drive and puts the pedal to the metal and he is out of there and they're gonna pile back in their car. We see it from another angle, we get a little bit more clarity here watch these guys and how fast they come out and then our defender uses the drive and goes you see that one guy definitely had a firearm in his hand but our intended victim is off and gone before they are able to get back in the car second one here you see this guy backing up dudes on a motorcycle gonna come up and start a carjacking and threaten him with a gun he's gonna back up a ways but when that stops because of a barricade he's gonna absolutely destroy this guy and run him over you can see the two bad guys run off a little later without their bike. One more time, let's see what happened to them here. They're gonna come up real hard, point a gun, announce a carjacking. Our victim is going to try reverse, but hard barrier there. So forward it is right over that guy and make him crowd surf. And that's where this one ends. Got to admit, it's kind of funny watching those guys get their comeuppance. If you want to get better as a self-defender, the best way I know how to do that is by joining us at the ASP National Conference last weekend in September at the Living Water Ranch outside of Manhattan, Kansas. Link below with all the details helps us do good work and support the Flint Hills Foster Teen Camp. All right, let's get to lessons today. In this first one, I think our first lesson is that it is a good idea if you can to back in to your driveway or your garage. Now you think about it, you're gonna either have to back in or back out. So you're gonna be doing some backing with your car. And if you back in, that lets you see what's going on in your world. Now, of course, I don't think you necessarily need to do that if, for instance, you live in a gated community or if you know you have other security measures or whatever. But for most of us that don't live in that kind of environment, backing in does make some sense because it lets you see what's going on in your world a little bit easier and that can buy you time. Now notice that he was paying attention and so when you see these guys pull up, oh no, bad things are coming. And now you have to not only be able to see but actually paying attention. Attention buys you time. Time buys you options. Now, if our good guy was still engrossed in the, just the backing up thing, wasn't seeing what's going on in his world, wouldn't have mattered that he was backing in. But because he did see these guys pull up, mm, that's not right, and then did see him come out, then he can start responding. And in fact, he responded in under two seconds. When he sees them, off he goes into drive and starts using the vehicle. Most of the time, the car is the best tool you have if you are in it. If you are in your vehicle, that is the best tool. I know a lot of us carry firearms. I carry a firearm everywhere I'm legally allowed to, and I recommend that people carry firearms if they are legally allowed to. But in these kinds of incidents around our cars, the car is almost always the best choice because it's a heck of a force multiplier and it lets you get out of the danger zone very quickly, just like we see in this guy here. He is gone before they can get any shots off on him. And that was very good. Now notice as well, you're gonna see this guy here. He's gonna pile out and go, oh, wait a minute. What is my best solution? Now he has a firearm up and pointing at our intended victim. And the victim still used the car because he's not expecting the guy to do that. And because of that, he gets inside his OODA loop. He gets inside his reactionary gap. And again, uses the grill of the car as a force multiplier. And even though the guy got the heck out of the way, the distances changed so fast that he didn't get any shots off on him. And so again, we see that again and again on camera, this becomes a great solution and doesn't put you at more jeopardy, but actually at less because you see how long it takes them to get into the car. Now, distances open up here in a hurry. And the reality that we see in actual real life defensive gunfights is that most people can't hit the broadside of a barn past about 10 yards, 15 yards at the absolute outside. So getting yourself past 15 yards as fast as you can is a good strategy as a general rule and also having, I think, skills beyond that ourselves so that we have a definitive advantage also good. Okay, let's look at our next one here. We're going to see these guys come up very, very quickly and, and announce an attack. And our good guy in this case goes backwards, but then runs into a barrier. I get it, the fact that, he, wait, he was already in reverse. And so that's the direction that he chose to go. But I, we can't see what the barrier is here, but it obviously was a very hard barrier. And that could easily have set off his, uh, you know, his airbags or something like that. So 
I do think forward is the way to go. It's the way the car was driven. So make sure that you can get that car in forward quickly and go. Next thing, of course, lock your stinking doors. I can't believe how often I have to say it on the channel in carjacking situations. Lock your doors. Your doors should always be locked. The second you get in the car and everybody in the car, lock the doors. Don't unlock the doors until you're ready to get out of the car because they provide a necessary barrier that a bad guy has to defeat in order to get through to you. And they give you more time in order to protect yourself. Now, next thing, we ask the question, I'm sure somebody's gonna wonder, wait a minute, is it justified for him to run this other guy over? The answer is absolutely. They're operating in concert. They are both a deadly threat to you. And therefore, what, which deadly force you use to defend yourself is not important. But that deadly force is authorized to be used in this instance, is clear, because the guy pulls a gun on him and, and threatens him with a gun, threatens his life there. So absolutely, and the car can be a good uh, force multiplier in this particular instance, and I would recommend using it. Now that said, some of our vehicles will not do this anymore because of safety features in the car. So you gotta know if your car will do this or not, and if not, weave around so that your car's safety features don't defeat your in your self-defense, which of course, we still wanna leave those there though because it's far more likely for us to have a car wreck and that help us in the car wreck than need to defend ourselves against a deadly threat. So just know what your car can do. Finally, okay, the bad guys got away in this one and I'm okay with that. What I really want is I want to get away myself and my family to be safe. What happens to the bad guy is on them, not on me. Let's learn some lessons here about paying attention in our car, perhaps backing into our garages and parking spots if we can. Let's pay attention to our world. Use the car effectively. Get the heck out of the danger zone. Use it as a force multiplier as we need to and cover our ASP.